Welcome back to Glass with L. Today we are going to be making a scene out of glass and metal. I like to call it bubble bombs because the goal is to make the girl in the picture look like she is blowing little glass bombs. So we're going to start off with two pieces of glass, whatever size you'd like to use, and some enamels. We have some enamels here, but I really suggest that you buy some yourself and a couple of little cups to mix your enamels into. Also, you'll need some silkscreen medium, some wire cutters and pliers, some metal that is steel preferably, and your design. As you can see here, I listed out my steps that I'm going to need to use within this design and I highly recommend that you also plan out exactly what you're gonna do. So I've made my little circles, which are my bombs, and I'm gonna take some of my Elmer's glue dip the edges of my circles in the glue very lightly and place them on the glass where I want them to be. Now in future I will probably use larger circles to make larger bubbles but this one was kind of my test run. I also made little staple shaped pieces of wire as well to be the tops of the bombs and that is totally optional. If you just want to have little bubbles actually coming out of your bubble blower that's cool too. I just like to have a little bit of dark humor along with my pieces. So I'm also dipping those little staples in the glue and applying them to the tops of my bubbles. Now once I've applied all of my little metal bombs, I am going to start working on the figure that is going to be sitting at the bottom. Now in my original design, this figure was crouching down, but I've decided to make her standing up and I'm going to be using contact paper and an X-Acto knife to make my design, as well as some little decals of some leaves. Now I'm going to use some decal stickers that we have here at the studio to add some interesting texture and relief of little shiny leaves onto the surface of my piece around where my figure and my bubbles will be. I'm applying these stickers not so that they'll stay there and look like stickers afterwards, but so that I can sponge my enamel over it and then remove the stickers later to provide a little relief of the leaves. Now I've made my little bubble blower out of metal with my pliers and I'm going to also apply that to my piece as well. As you'll see later in the video, I applied it a little bit too close to this first bomb so in the future I would probably space them out more so that air does not get trapped between those pieces of metal where I didn't necessarily want a bubble. So now I'm going to draw my figure onto my contact paper and once again cut out where I want that relief. I'm going to be using my X-Acto knife to cut out the shape of my figure and provide a little bit of a structure to where I will be sponging down that enamel. So now I'm applying that contact paper to my glass. I'm trying to smooth it out as much as possible so that there aren't any open spaces between my contact paper where that enamel will get in. Unfortunately, again, as future me will find out, I did leave some little spaces so there was bit of a mess with the enamel so definitely squeeze it as hard and firmly as possible down and yeah learn from my lessons do as I say not as I did here's a close-up of the piece thus far before I put the enamel And now I'm mixing the enamel with the silkscreen medium. In this video, once again, I messed up. I know, there's a trend here. I put way too much silk medium onto my enamel, and as future me will again find out, it leaked. 
pretty much everywhere and I had to clean it up with a Q-tip. Um, but now I've learned that lesson. So take it from me, make sure that your solution is quite a bit thicker and I would recommend putting a lot of enamel into your cup or as much as you think you need and then applying a tiny bit of silk screen medium to that powder a little bit at a time and mix it as thoroughly as possible so that you don't end up with a wet soggy mess like I did. Once you apply your enamel to your little person, then you're going to mix up your other background color. Here I have this really bright canary yellow or sunflower yellow and I am going to once again apply way too generously some silk screen medium and mix it up. I use a little toothpick to mix my solutions up. You can use whatever you'd like. So now I have this little sponge and I'm going to dip it in my enamel and lightly dab on top of my leaves and the background glass. I'm going to avoid the bombs as much as I can. However, I did get a little bit of enamel on those bombs and I just scraped it off once again with a Q-tip. I'm now using my tweezers to lift up my contact paper and make sure that everything is right where it should be, which of course it wasn't. So I used my Q-tip once again to clean out everything where I didn't want it to be. And this process actually went on a lot longer than this video shows because I didn't want you to just have to sit there and watch me fumble. I removed my leaves now and as I did with the purple enamel, I used way too much medium in my yellow enamel. So you can see where there's darker spots where I left the leaves and that's actually where the enamel pulled. So once again, I went through, but this time with a toothpick and scraped that color out. I've got some glass line in black and I'm going to use this little tiny dropper to make my lines with it because as it sits in this glass line bottle, It'll come out pretty blobby and I want to have a little bit more control. So I'm going to place my second piece of glass right on top of my surface. And at this point, all of the enamel is dry or as dry as it's going to be. You don't want to do this until your enamel is dry. I actually had to use a hair dryer to get it dry enough for this. And now I'm going to outline my person with that black enamel. Once I've outlined my person, I'm going to place that second pane of glass to the side, get some Elmer's glue, and apply a little bit of glue to the tops of all of my metal. Since I was having a tendency to overuse everything else in this project, I wanna make sure that I don't over apply my glue here on top of the metal. These points of glue and metal contact are going to be what keeps that second pane of glass on top of the first pane of glass. So be slightly generous, but not too excessive. Then you carefully place your second piece of glass on top of your first and make sure that those edges align really well. You might even want to leave this here to dry and set for a little bit before moving on to the next part, but in true L fashion, I continue on because what is patience really? Grab a little bit of aloe and use your Q-tip or your toothpick, whatever small implement you'd like and add little dabs right above those staple-like shapes of your bombs. This aloe is going to be used to hold some fine frit that actually turned out to be just small frit, not super fine, on top to add the little spark and pizzazz of a bomb ready to explode. I chose red opal frit 
for my project and here I am fumbling to put a little bit of that onto my piece with a brush because I wanted to have the maximum control but of course I realized that this is not the best way to do it and I decided to use this small tool that everyone is quite familiar with and whoops there it goes spilling a large amount of this frit that's not really fine but actually just chunky fine maybe medium or small onto my piece. So I give up trying to use it in the classic way and start dumping small pools of red everywhere. And I just wiped off the excess to create this little pre-fired masterpiece. Now, after you create your masterpiece, you want to put it in for a full fuse and specify on your paper that you do not want a bubble squeeze. That assures you that you get these little bubbles in your piece within those bombs. As you can see, that bubble formed between my bubble blower and my first bomb, which was not desirable, but still works with the whole composition. And if you look at it through the light, it's really quite lovely. And I definitely want to try doing this again. Hopefully it'll come out a little cooler. And I also added, of course, some gold luster to my leaves because it wouldn't be one of my projects without some gold luster on it. Gold Luster goes up to a tack fuse, so once you're done with your full fuse, you want to put it back in for your tack fuse, and then you are done, and you have a little cute and diabolical bubble blower. Ta-da!